So I'm Nevin Lieber, and I'm going to basically do like the history behind MD Span. <laughs> so I work at Argonne National Labs. Um, I work on Cocos, C, and Sickle. I work on the Aurora Supercomputer. I'm also on the C committee. I am the vice chair of the Library Evolution Working Group Incubator. And I'm also on the Kronos Sickle Committee. So, what is MD Span? Before like, diving into the history, it's a not only multi dimensional array view for C23. We consider this a vocabulary type. This is something that would be used in interfaces and used across domains. And there are a few more constructors and a few more data access things, but this is roughly what it looks like. First, there's four template parameters, two of which I defaulted. The first is like, you know, what is it a, you know, a span over? The next are extends, which is basically just describes the dimensions of the multidimensional array. So what this looks like is it has um, an index type. The index type is, you know, it could be int, size t. It's what you're going to be used for index, what it internally uses for indexing. Um, changing that may matter for performance. And then each of the dimensions. And the reason we use size t there is because standard dynamic extent, which came with um, standard span in C++ 20, is size t. So if it says standard dynamic extent, this is something an extent that is no calculated at runtime. If it's a number, then it's the compile time extent. And that's for optimization purposes. We also have this thing called dextents. And roughly using um, some little bit of metaprogramming, if you have dextents in comma three, that's just an ali type alias for extents in comma dynamic extent, dynamic extent, dynamic extent. You want to say we have you know, a three-dimensional all dynamic. Quarantine and I really did try to get dynamic extent shortened as DIN, but the committee wasn't going for it in C20. Next we have a layout. Right? Layout right, which is C C ordering. You have layout left, you know, that's column major. It was also a layout stride that's provided, and you can do user-defined layouts. It can give you tile, symmetric, sparse, etc. And inside the layout, there's a mapping that just describes all this, right? Is it always unique? Is it exhaustive, which is contiguous, but in C++, right, contiguous kind of implies linear, and that's not necessarily true. Is it strided? And we can compare various mappings. And finally, there's an accessor policy. And that's where like the pointer and ref, uh, that shouldn't say pointer type anymore, sorry. <sighs> Darn, thought I get the block. We rename that to data handle type. I'll tip Y. We can add things like restrict. You can do remote memory, compressed memory, atomic access. Um, atomic ref can be there, inside there. And here's what the default one looks like. And it's just, you know, you construct it. You construct it from other kind of accessors. And then an access member, which is just roughly what square brackets do. And an offset, which is um, P plus I calculation. Those may be different if you have some kind of fancy pointer type or some kind of data handle. That's why we allow it as a way to customize. And you know, constructing it, so you have to take a pointer or a data handle type, and the extents. I mean, there's a few other constructors. And if you're trying to you know, get to a point, it's regular square bracket, com operator based on a new C23 feature. Language feature, I should say. So how did we get here? Right? It was an eight-year mission. It took us a long time. And although almost every single year we thought we were going to ship it. So way back in 2014 is when all this started. 
Um, Lucas and Herb Sutter from Microsoft bring a paper called Multidimensional Bounds, Index, and Array View. Based on C++ AMP, and we had static extents. And so if you look at it, right, it takes a bounds rect, you know, some special bounds type inside, which is the rectangle, if it's two dimensional, it'll be the rectangle. And then for indexing, there was another index type, which again for two dimension is, you know, where the point is. So you'd have to construct all of these auxiliary types to use this. And there was also a strategy review as part of this. This was discussed in Istiqla in 2014. And people really wanted the variadic um, square bracket operator at that point, but nobody wanted to wait for it. And also the ability to have both static extents, normal compile time, and dynamic extents, a way to mix the two. So what we do on the committee is people present papers, we give a little design guidance, and then we poll to see what we want. So in Isqua, a lot of polls were taken over this. And the way polls work, you'll see five numbers. It's first number is how many people are strongly in favor, then weakly in favor, the neutral, weakly against, strongly against. So do people want the square bracket parentheses syntax? Yeah, mostly it's like, 10 in favor, three against. People just want, you know, function call operator, because that's variadic already, so that will work. Not really, right? How about spelling it two different ways? No, we just want one way to spell this kind of thing. Should we delay the paper, paper into the erase technical specification? And I'll get to what that is, or was, until there's a fixed array view. No, I really didn't want to delay it. Should there be iterators? No. How about a way to do layouts, right? Because this one really didn't have it, it just had a bounds. Yeah, layouts would be good, but should we hold up, you know, putting it in the erase TS? No, should not hold it up. And then we all vote, okay, do we move it into the erase TS? That's pretty strong consensus. And how we do that, this will be a very short talk. <laughs> You'll get snacks, right? <laughs> if only. <laughs> ah, we were so, you know, we were naive. <laughs> Although eight years later, you know, I'm still pretty naive about this kind of stuff. I'm very optimistic. <laughs> so we had an array, we were going to do an array technical specification. So this was born in Chicago, a meeting that um, the company I was at, we hosted. And there was a proposal to do runtime size arrays with automatic storage duration. And then stack arrays. But it had, it had some um, issues for some people, right? There's no balance checking, you can overrun the stack, right? And there's no iterator support, right? You need you know, a safe way to access it. Be a very reasonable request. So what kind of container would kind of work for this? Well, there were a bunch of things that kind of existed either in the wild or were being proposed, right? Like T right, models, right, exactly one. It's, it's a scalar. Right, optional, you can think of one of the mental models for optional is it models up to, right, it's a container of zero or one elements, but no dynamic allocation, right? Array always models exactly n elements. Vector always models an indefinite number of elements. Static vector is up to m, that's a vector with all embedded space. Um, the names keep changing as we're trying to standardize it right now. Small vector has um, embedded space up to n elements and then goes to the heap, or the allocator. And then there was a proposal by Lawrence Crowell called um, DynArray, which models exactly n, but it does it via n allocation when you construct it. And this seemed to be a good fit. And if you notice, the allocator was not part of the type. But that's because you only need it for construction, so that's the only place it gets passed. It doesn't have to get saved for any reason. But there were some questions, right? How does, if we use this for stack memory, how does it work if this is embedded in another type, right? It's a class. You can make it an aggregate as part of something else. And what if that aggregate is on the heap? Is part of your memory on the heap, part in the stack? 
And compiler writers were saying, we don't know how to implement this. So we were kind of at an impasse. And so, okay, let's create a technical specification to try to explore this question so we can sort it all out. Back in then, that's what we tend to do, try to do a lot of. Then at the ISACOA meeting, it's like, hey, what other array kind of things do we have? We should fill up the technical specification with a bunch more stuff that has questions. So array view was like the top of that list. There was an array ref, which is span-like. I'll get to what actually spawned spans at some point. String ref, which from Google, which came, became string view. Someone wanted to add multidimensional support to standard array. I mean, that would have broken ABI, but again, we were young and naive then. We didn't think that hard. Make array, which eventually did ship. Share, have share pointer and make sure they should support arrays as well, which also did ship. But it goes on. And the next meeting, Jacksonville, like nothing really happened with it. Took another poll, should we kill it? Yeah, let's kill it. So it lasted as an idea for three years. So back to 2014. Okay, we don't have an array TS, wrappers well, so there's some wording changes in the next revision. Should we put it in the library fundamentals TS version two? Again, you know, 14 to two, that's pretty strong. Nah, we never did that either. And around this time, something else, you know, really important to C++, the first version of this conference happened. I think it fit in this room, right? <laughs> and you can see, I don't, I don't know if Herb was excited that his paper was gonna get in, but you can see him, you know, pretty excited over there dancing. That's Herb Sutter. <laughs> I think this is why people put me on panels so I don't take pictures like that. <laughs> and of course, the unveiling of the hat that you've all seen me wear <laughs> for grilling the C++ committee. But I digress. Okay, we get to Urbana. Should we make a formal motion to get a review into the standard? Or sorry, into the library fundamentals version two? Yes, we should. Well, other papers started showing up about this around this time. Um, N4222 by Rector and Jesse showed up. And so it was discussed in, in Urbana, but after the meeting. So kind of unofficially discussed. I mean, we have, I don't want to say rigid time schedule, but we have like, a very loose agenda when the meeting takes place. And after that, things are unofficial until the next meeting. And so, but there were pills taken there. And so should the one dimensional array view be taken away from the multi dimensional one and made it to a separate type? No, we, we all want it one, it's one type still. If the variadic operator square bracket comes along, and I do not believe there were any proposals at that point for that, should we use it? Sure. Should we allow square bracket for the 1D case, even if we don't like you know use op the function call operator? Yes, we should. And um, Carter Edwards, that's Andy at the time, um, comes up with a lot of um, concerns over array view. Right. Big one being, you know, layout has a significant impact on performance. You need a way to set it. And you need a way to, you know, have compile and runtime dimensions. And, you know, some miners are you don't need the index and bounds data structures. You can just pass arrays for those things if you, or standard array if you want to. And kind of like, you know, if you have array view of t common rank, the rank isn't the same as the length in standard array. People might get confused. We, we tend to worry a lot about that kind of stuff. And so his recommendation was we should delay N4177, should not put it in. That was year one. <laughs> Seven to go. <laughs> so we get to revision five. So we have a library only meeting in um, Cologne, library and library revolution, because we're just falling behind on stuff. And half that meeting got co-opted by the networking TS. 
So half the people who worked on the networking and the rest of us were far more efficient and went through a lot more papers. <laughs> now they were pretty efficient. It was just networking was really tough one to get. It was as you know, at the time, tough to get through. And there were many detailed comments and a bunch of changes. And again, right, looking in good shape to move in Lenexa at the next meeting. Like I said, we are very optimistic that we can ship things quickly. Next revision comes. Um, some more changes are requested. And it hit the straw polls page and it was voted down and I can't find anyone who remembers why. I was there and I don't remember why. So if anyone, like especially committee members, remember why, please let me know. It's just, it's lost my mind. I couldn't find it anywhere on our internal wikis. I just don't know. So the Cocos group was working on um, a very similar thing, Cocos View. This is a multi-dimensional array of zero or more dimensions, right? It's not quite implemented like this, right? These are optional template parameters, kind of. Right, first is data type, right? That's easy. <laughs> Well, not quite so easy. There's, there's some um, terseness in it, so you can declare things very tersely short. Like star means runtime dimension, and square bag with a number in it means you compile time dimension. So if you have a view of double star star, that's a 2D view of doubles with two runtime dimensions. If you have a view constant star 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 5, 3, that's a 5D view. Um, three runtime, two compile time dimensions. And because there's a constant there, the data is read-only. So it's, it's, it's pretty clever. And you can index things with, you know, again, function call because it's all we had for multiple dimensions. 1D views can be indexed with square brackets. Um, one thing about this, it's sometimes owning. In colorless parlance, it's managed or unmanaged. And it's sometimes reference counting. When we need to put things on devices, we can't access the reference count. So we don't reference count them once these views go onto GPUs and stuff from the CPU. They're just, these are hard limitations. These are hard engineering problems to solve. Um, layout, which, you know, again, maps into season to offsets. Um, Tile is provided as well as the other three. Memory space is where does this memory reside? Because you can't always access, like, CPU may not be able to access the GPU's memory, even two GPUs may not be able to access each other's memory. And then traits. And that's really kind of what the, what became the MNC on accessor policy, plus is it managed or unmanaged is one of the traits. Again, you know, things like atomic or random access are in there, or, you know, siege restrict can be put in there. How it's really implemented is that the data type, then, then a bunch of properties, and we walk the type list to find the optional things. In or it has to be in that order. I'll get more into properties in a bit. So back to Linexa. <laughs> so Perry Edwards and Christian Trout. Um, bring shared array and weak array, weak array being the one that's not owning. And if you notice, it also has, right, size type equals size T, right? So you can say what the index type, the way the index is. And be able to customize this is important for performance, for the things we do, especially the things we do in HPC, right, performance computing. And there was also, like, a kind of a language extension, which would have been nice, is that you put this... Make it optional if you, whether or not you put the numbers in there. If we could do that, then we could say, you know, instead of double star star number number number, you could intersperse them, right? Before, we could not intersperse the two. Let me go back a few. Right? Because that in star 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 5.3 still has to be valid C++, right? This is, focus is a pure library. So the runtime dimensions have to come before the compiled time dimensions. The 
So do we want to allow square bracket for you know rank one, right? Is another way to spell it. Sure. I mean the rooms get finicky. And same time Neil McIntosh from Microsoft. Um, he's now taking over like a ray view. And this is actually the first appearance of um, Byte, or will become standard Byte. And really the differences between what he proposed and the one in, that showed up at 17 is that we, it's always unsigned, uh, enum class of unsigned care. And the standard blesses it for allowing type hunting. Right? You cannot do this yourself. You, the standard has to give you that privilege. And another thing with this array view, that if you try to construct it with invalid values, it would terminate. It's not undefined behavior. And that can be tough. <laughs> and there's a lot of types in this. There's an index type, and there's a bounds iterator. And then there's a little helper to keep track of dimensions. And oh, let's say you wanted to change the index type, so you pass in the array view traits thing with the value type and the index type you want. Right, and finally we get to array view and either you pass the value type directly or this, this traits thing. And this is the first time I remember actually looking at any of this stuff in LEWG. And my thoughts at that point is like, this is way too complicated for me. I, I would never use this kind of thing. But I wasn't doing any work that required it either. I'll let the people who need this figure it out. <laughs> if only I knew. <laughs> Three years to the day of the publication of this paper is the day I started at Argon National Labs. So had I known, maybe I would have like put more effort into this. But it's hard on the community to do that because there's a lot going on. You really have to pick what you want to work on. You can't do everything. There's just not enough time. So the next version of this paper gets rid of the multidimensional stuff. And this will become span. But of course, because of the previous one, I just stopped paying attention to this. Until the plenary when like span was going into the standard. So for this audience, I need to apologize. I'm sorry. That, that, that whole, it's unsigned, is, is I led the charge. It was, it was a hard, I mean, it was a hard battle. Both, both sides made very good points. I mean, I'm up against some well-known luminary, some of which you saw on stage yesterday. <laughs> this was all before I was in HPC, and I hope I didn't fall for this. Like, one of the things we do on the committee is if, if you don't want, if you want something, you go, oh, the performance, can, it, it doesn't cost much, don't worry about it. And if you don't want something, one cycle, I can't afford that. You want to compare against a null pointer? No. Too expensive. I hope I didn't fall for that when I was doing it. I really try not to. I don't think those are very good arguments. But for me, it was interoperability with the rest of the standard library because all the, other, all the containers use size T or unsigned, and you end up having to cast a lot. But, you know, this was a hard, you know, this was hard, and the other, you know, People on the other side, they're making different trade-offs than I was. And would I have made the same ones today? I don't know. So P0009, right? We changed our numbering system from N papers to P papers. This is the first, what will be, you know, actually MD span. And it's not just Cocos folks, though, right? We're getting more people on board, or they're getting more people on board. I've not yet joined Cocos at that point. Um, like Juan's in finance, Jesse's from University of British Columbia, Morrow's in um, Switzerland, all AMD folks. And trying to adjust the issues that ArrayView had, right? We need layout. And we need um, static and dynamic extents. And if we don't get that, then it's not going to be a useful class. We'll need to do more classes to get access to our direct mapping to the hardware. So if it looks familiar, it looks kind of like the Cocos version, right? Except lowercase v instead of an uppercase v. 
And so for a view of multidimensional array rate, you can either pass a property or that whole, you know, change the array declaration to allow numbers op be, being optional, not required. But there's a problem with this. Right, and it produces equivalent but distinct types. So when you have an interface, what do you declare, right? And you can do separate overloads if you can enumerate all the differences. Or you pay a small runtime conversion cost from what your type is until the one you're putting in. Or you stay in template land forever. None of those are very satisfying. You would rather, again, especially for vocabulary types, you want a single type, right, to describe this. So, and this has a layout template parameter. Right, so do we want zero static zero length extents? Sure. At that point, we still wanted property lists because it's a very extensible mechanism, right? That's the benefit. Right? You can extend it in the future because you have a parameter pack there. You can add things arbitrarily. And do we want to have bounds checking? Yes, that's a good idea. So it gets the Kona, 2015. Um, the name changes to array ref. And how do we deal with errors, right? People passing the wrong kinds of things in. And they're saying, maybe we should wait for contracts to show up and use contracts to do this. Because there were some, um, I don't think the current, any of the current stuff, I think it was John Lakos's um, macro proposal for concepts was, sh or for contracts was showing up. So why do we need, I'll give another sidebar, why do we need, we need or want contracts? Because I do want them. Right? right now, we really only have one knob in the standard that says, you know, here be dragons, don't, don't go here. And that's undefined behavior. And, and in my opinion, everything else is defined behavior. Some people will say there's like soft undefined behavior and then give you a definition. If, if you give a definition, that means defined. That's to me. And the problem is developers will write code dependent on any defined behavior you tell them. Right? I've seen people, you know, will throw... You know, type throw instead of standard terminate because they know it'll terminate if they're not in an exception, in a catch block. So what I see contracts giving us are more knobs, are things we can do when things like preconditions are violated. Hopefully C++ 26. Back to here, R1. Oh, wait, there, there's, there's 18 revs of this paper. <laughs> Not all major. The view is now array ref. And because of the span discussions, there's a debate on signed versus unsigned size type. Um, there are more details added for layouts. And that, whole, uh, that array declaration syntax is moving to a different paper. And at this point, the library evolution working group decided they just want papers with wording and have all the motivation in a separate document. Because we just want to concentrate on wording because we're trying to get it into the standard. So as part of version three of this proposal, there's something called the undesirable extent mechanism, B proposal, which is template size T dot 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 integral extent, struct extents. You may have seen something similar to like in the final version. So in Albuquerque, finally renamed to MD span. Yay. And some changes to align it with span. Still kind of hoping for, like, uh, you know, a race, you know, the terse syntax. So should we be able to index this thing with a span? Because, right, a span can represent a point. Sure, yes. How about a one dimensional MD span, right? Yeah, we should be able to do that too. Hey, let's forward this to the library working group for library fundamentals v3. Unanimous consent. I think you know where this is going. No, it never got in there either. We have yet to ship Library Fundamentals V3. Um, Alistair Meredith and Bryce and um, Jonathan Wakeley are writing, have a paper in the mailing that goes out in two days saying that we should ship it now as is. If we don't, there's other things that they don't want to do, which is either rebase, wait for 23 to ship, and then we'll rebase it on 23 and then ship it after that. 
forget about shipping it at all, let's just merge it into 23, or just merge it into 26, or just throw it away. Yeah, it, we, we come up with these things, but yeah, it takes us a while to ship technical specifications. It's usually, we try to make it, if we have open questions, how do we answer them? But they're a lot of work, and they're a lot of work for implementers, and a lot of their users just won't use them because they know the interface is going to change. They don't want to be dependent on them. So it's hard to get feedback from them. They seem to be better off for language proposals than library proposals, but we as a committee are still wrestling with that. So R5, um, the R4 changes were made, expect um, indexing by um, span because there's no actual need for it. No one's proven that they're actually going to use it. It just, it felt like it should fit, but you know, there's no practical guidance for it. And R5 was not reviewed in Jacksonville, however, because Daisy wrote a paper talking about properties. And of course, we took polls, right? So do you want the customization of, um, of basic MD span? Do you have like mapper and accessor? Yes, um, but there was an against, and they didn't want too many types of the type list. And ultimately, do we want properties? I don't know. Sorry, Daisy. <laughs> so at this point, now we have basic MD span. And then kind of like the, the short one is kind of the common case. Um, extents are, are, are signed again. We, we go through this a lot. But it's, it's starting to look like what the final version is going to be. So after Rapperswell in 2018, um, working on wording and span wasn't going to make, seven, make 17, so how do we refer to it in a, in a document where it doesn't exist yet? Um, and reference implementation was done um, by Cocos folks, so some updates came based on actually implementing it. And then R9 have you know, more wording, and I joined Argon a week before this. And at about that same time, um, Quarantine had a paper to deprecate uses of comma inside square brackets. So basically, if you do array of x comma y, that's deprecated. Right, kind of having this thing in mind in the future someday, but you know, it was nice that that actually made it into C20. Okay, R10 is done. Our C20 is done as of R10. Right, stands there. MD spans not ready yet. In Prague, I accepted the library evolution working group incubator vice chair position because it's only a little bit more work. I know how this thing works. And then, like, and everything started closing down. And yay, pandemic. So, for 11, I'm now an author on, on this paper. And change all the sizes back from point because span was size T. We changed all the types back to size T. And I also made sure we got a bit more explicit about trivially copyable. And it's important for the stuff we do. Because normally, how do we copy objects in C++, right? We have a copy constructor or a copy assignment operator. But that runs code. And that code may have to access memory in both the source and destination objects. Well, it does have to. So can we always do the same for inner device copy? You know, either host to device or device to device? The answer, unfortunately, is no. Where would this code run? You know, does it run on a CPU or a GPU? If you can't access it, what do you do, right? The one thing we know we can do is we can mem copy the bytes. And in C++, right, that, the only proxy we have for that is trivially copyable. And um, I know Nina Rens is giving a talk on Friday. You may want to go to that, talking more about this kind of thing. So R12, and now we're just, you know, all telecons all the time, weekly telecons. And we're saying, well, we don't want to put the, you know, now that we 
past C++20, we don't want it to be in the library fundamentals. We'd like to actually get into the standard. Took the vote, and 6 neutral. The syntax is still hoped for. And the next part of the uh, multidimensional subject language proposal came from our common Daisy, Cornton, Izzy, and Christian. And roughly allow square brackets uh, with a variadic, or I think variadic, right? Just be multiple arguments. Um, part of this fell through that I, I saw. Um, Slightly before the cutoff for language features, so I don't know, like, so, yeah, cause we wanted, you know, the ultimate goal was that function call operator and square bracket operator have exactly the same kind of syntax. And as part of C23, you can now make the function call operator static, and no one remembered to do that for the square bracket operator. So I have a paper that'll fix this. Extremely unlikely to get in 23, although I've had a couple of national bodies ask me about it, so we'll see. We may get it in from a national body comment. I don't think it's a big change, but it's still a change after feature complete, and those are always a little bit risky. So we have more telecons, and we end up with a uh, de-extends type alias, right? Um, Bryce and a few others figure out a way to do this so we can just Make it work so we don't need a, a separate basic MD span class and then just MD span. We just have MD span and we move it to D extents when you need an array of all dynamic, uh, MD span of all dynamic extents. And we also added deduction guides and the square bracket operator here. And let me get on to uh, a little bit why CTAD is very useful in this circumstance. Right, so if you haven't seen deduction guides, they came with C++17, and they allow you to use a syntax without angle brackets to map, say, if I have a pair with just two types I pass in, that's the type it should become. All the parameters must be deduced. There's some implicit ones as well as user, this is like a user defined one. And when I was, I've been actually adding these to Cocos, and doing this, I came to an epiphany that it just produces a different overload set of ones without using angle brackets for anything. And then it has to map in, so you have to find a best match there, and it has to map into the constructors, which also has to find a best match once you have the type. So like if you look at, you know, pair in, right, con, the income con secure star, right, that's using just, you know, pair constructors, so pair of D two comma three, will match exactly one constructor once I have those types. And the reason it's important here, oh, sorry. <laughs> so this is an immense gain in usability for types with lots of template parameters and complicated ones, like MD span. But it is a trade-off. Right? There are times you still need to know the exact type with template parameters. If you're declaring member variables, or if you're debugging things when things are not compiling. It's, some of the error messages are not great. I've found with deduction guides that can actually be worse because you're seeing the wrong overloads. Here, are the, you can't possibly read this, but here are the eight we added. And I'm just gonna go through one of them. Right, taking the constructor, or taking the deduction guide that takes a pointer to one object. And so if you have this little piece of code, right, int i equals zero, int star p equals address of i, and then md span, no angle brackets, right? So the first thing, well, okay, you're calling it, it's an md span of int star ref. So it's going through, it goes through all the deduction guides and looking for it and gets to this one and says, okay, got a requires clause, so I got to remove the reference, I get int star. Is that a pointer? Yes, it is. Okay, if I remove the pointer, I get int. So now this maps the MD span of int, comma, extend size t. There are two default parameters that are provided for MD span, so now it's really MD span of int, extend size t, layout right, default accessor int. And then it looks in there to find the best matched constructor. It has to find exactly one. So it finds the one that's template, um, class dot dot other index types, that whole thing. 
basically takes the pointer and then a bunch of indices. Other index types is an empty parameter pack. So the final call is, you know, that MD span call is really calling this constructor in that type. And th that's just a huge usability gain, except when you need to know those types. So we're getting there, right? We're starting to wind down. So let's send this to the library. You know, are we done evolving it? Now's the time, you know, for the library working group to make sure, you know, we're somewhat consistent, the wording's good. You know, did we get it right? Yes? Time? Uh, next year, right? This year, 2022. They review wording. Next revision, they review more wording. Time is starting to run out. There, there are hard cutoffs um, for features. In the, in the, so we decide we don't need sub MD span. And because it just is not going to be enough time for the library working group to review it. We just ran out. Same here. And so as part of this, um, I think it was Bryce, well, he also came up with, we should be able to change the, size, change the index type again, right? And here's where we change it. We change it in extents. And we weren't sure if the committee was going to go for, you know, signed versus unsigned. So we'll just, you know, let's constrain it to unsigned types. And, you know, LEWG said, nah, don't bother. <laughs> signed is fine here. You know, as long as the default is size T, after that you can, you know, do what you want. And we were still, like, debating, um, should we use constraints or mandates? It should be a mandate. And it, you know. Pretty strong consensus. I mean, the weekly against is, is, at this point, we're making changes. It's not ready. That's what some people feel that way whenever we make any kind of change. So, you know, the risk is going up, right? It could get pulled, and then it's another three years. And we're trying to mitigate this risk. We don't want, we want MD span in. We don't want to wait three more years because we think it's ready. Three more years will just be three more years of debate, give you something different, not necessarily better. And three more years, the same thing can happen again. There's nothing that says it won't. So after, like an hour after that discussion, I realized we shouldn't call it size type because everywhere in the standard, size type is unsigned. We should call it index type. So OK, let's change all that. Except empty span has a size function. That should return a signed, an unsigned type. So I had this as a separate paper, right? Again, I don't want to risk MD span for this. If I have to file a national body comment because if this didn't get in, I would do that, but it's all about risk mitigation. Took a bunch of polls. You know, some people wanted, like, it's already a conscious choice to use a sign type. It's more important to call it size underscore type so it's compatible and other things. I'm not sure what those things were, but I didn't agree with that. Or additional complexity, it's a late change. It, remember, all changes at this point, as we're trying to ship, you know, hit the final cutoff in July, is risk. But ultimately, um, it goes through this paper as well. Um, we need to do some renaming inside MD span. Again, didn't want to take the risk. So it's a separate paper, and it renames pointer to data handle type because we don't need much of pointer. We just need. It's a handle to data. And again, and contiguous, we don't, contiguous implies linear, and that's not necessarily what we're using it for. This paper goes, you know, pretty strong. Um, someone noticed empty, we had size, but not empty. That almost didn't make it because there was a wording bug in it. Even though like one line addition can get wording bugs. Here's the actual vote. <laughs> Right, apply the changes in P009R18 MD span to the C working paper. Unanimous consent. This happened on July 25th at 11.25 a.m. Chicago time. That's where I'm based. Yay. Woohoo. <laughs> there I am. You can see I like hats. The top hat there. But, well, that was the Prague celebration for C 20. The MD span one was a little more subdued. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, pandemic. <laughs> it is an actual screenshot of, of the Slack channel. <laughs> But on August 17th, I'm going to notice that MD span had been applied to the working draft. Um, Cocos has reference implementation that NVIDIA has been putting into their stuff. And so that's the history behind it. And now I'm going to go a little into like how Sigil's going to be doing it and what we're going to be doing um, with Cocos with it. So about a year ago, a small group of us started thinking about how. Sure. Questions from online. Um, back on slide 115. <laughs> Does extents size T mean a static extent of size one? Yeah, it's a scalar. It's, it's, it's a scalar. And are there concrete plans for some way to declare or restrict aliasing semantics? Aliasing to... I'm sorry, to declare restrict slash aliasing semantics. Christian? <laughs> right, so we have an implementation, Cocos has an implementation that does this, but we don't know how to um, present it to the committee in such a way we can make it happen. And we tried in wrapper well. Thank you. So yeah, so I'm part of the Chrono Sigil committee. Like we started thinking about a year ago, how to you know what we can do. We can Sigil has accessors. We could replace them or augment them. You know, unified shared memory. You know, do more than three dimensions. Um, part of the issue with Sigil is that it, you know. It's roots are in graphics, so it's limited to three dimensions in a lot of ways. You know, the set accessor is, you know, not only view of a sickle buffer, right? It should look familiar, it's the same kind of thing. And MD span would give us, you know, layout policy and access policy. And rectangular copies we could do. But an alternative we're considering, and we don't know yet, is we can add these features to the sickle accessor as is. But we're leaning, we would like to be able, again, we have a vocabulary type, we would like to use it in the standard. That enables other people to do other kinds of things. It's also kind of like working on this embedded pointer from Hipsicle. And the current status of this is that um, we, we grew the subgroup of the three of us to have implementers. Um, we're working on a proposal for the next Chronos face-to-face -face meeting next month. And part of one of the question is, do we up the baseline for the next cycle to C plus plus twenty three, because operator square bracket requires that. Because if not, we're going to have to support um, function call operator forever. Don't know what's going to happen. Stay tuned. And Coco side of things, right? We are currently refactoring Vue to use MD span, and we have like um, three papers we're going to target towards C plus plus twenty six. Linear algebra, I'm not going to discuss it all. It's, we need another hour, three. MD array and sub MD span. So MD array is the owning version. And um, our zero paper is going to be a container policy. And it's an adapter. It's like stack or priority queue or the two new ones, flat set and flat map. And so the container policy replaces the accessor policy because here's what owns the data. And basically, eh, I just want a containers. So, okay, we'll just do containers. Simplifications are good. It, do they want them to, you know, should we just do containers instead of an adapter? I feel strongly we should do adapters still. And because we want to be able to use this over other kinds of containers, and especially containers that are device specific. Because we may have standard library containers we can't use. Because we have to decorate them with things like host, underscore underscore host, underscore underscore device, to be able to actually you know, call the square bracket operator. So I think we need to make this an adapter. So 
So for the C++ standard, default container should be vector. Sure. And now there are people are liking the container adapter design. And R3 um, made it more consistent with MD span, now that we know exactly what it should be looking like. But there's some, adapters are hard. So we have an MD array of all static extents, right? You have a strong invariant, you can't default construct it, right? You should be able to dereference, get to any of the elements. But if the underlying container has, right, is movable, like vector, the move from vector, well, vector itself is actually specified, but move from other kind of container, we don't know what state it's in. Right? The standard loves to say it's in a valid but unspecified state. That doesn't work well if you have to maintain an invariant on top of that. You have to know what that state is. Now, for array, there's no problem because the array always models exactly n elements, right? So it still has. You can dereference any of the n elements. The elements themselves may not be dereferenceable, but that's not MD array's problem. That's the problem of the user. But vector is a hard problem because clear was not sufficient to maintain the invariant. Like if it's an array of three, MD array of you know, three, comma three, right? We still have to have nine elements we can get into. And, and user-defined containers, I have no idea what to do. And if exceptions come in, I really have no idea, right? This is just moving, right? Exceptions can corrupt both the source and the destination. Now, to be fair, other, other adapters with invariants don't answer these questions very well either. Um, Priority queue doesn't answer this at all. It kind of assumes it's either empty or you haven't changed it. I have to, I'm waiting to see the wording for flat map and um, flat set. The way flat map's an adapter over two different containers. One's for keys, one's for values, and it has to keep that in sync. There was talk about just calling clear. They have that benefit. We're doing an adapter over arrays. We don't have that benefit. So I'll probably file a national body comment to, um, against flat map if they can't do it. And flat set if I have to, and priority queue, although I expect the priority queue one to just get ignored. Okay, I could talk a little about Southern D-SPAN. So it's, it's declared like this, and it's an auto because it returns a different MD span type, which, and as you've seen, these things are hard to describe. This was originally part of MD span, and there are customization points. And there's straight down ability to specify slices that compile time values. So if you have index type, again, from the input MD span, or you could have um, tuple of index type, index type, which is the subrange. Or you could say that you want the whole thing, which would be full extent. And if any of those types are integral constant, then it's a compile time constant baked in MD span. So you could do you know, offset, extent, and stride. There's a couple customization points. There's a sub MD span mapping and sub MD span offset, which you call unqualified and get um, argument dependent lookup. So, thanks to all this, and we were very, you know, optimistic and naive, and I think MD span's really good. I think we ended up with a very good design that we're final, that we're shipping. But these things take a long time, right? You know, no one expected it to take eight years when, when it got started, right? Who would embark on an eight-year project? <laughs> it helps to have people who get to think about this stuff for a long time. Right? The Cocos group, I mean, the earliest papers I saw were like 2012, and you guys were probably doing it before that, right? Before the papers were published. <laughs> it, it helps to have that experience. And yeah, there are certainly tens of people, probably hundreds. I mean, if we count the committee, you know, the authors of all these papers, I mean, you know, try very hard to make something better. Anyway, I have to put that one up. And any questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, can you describe or give an example of a method that changes the size of an MD array? 
for example, insert a row into a 2D MD array? No, you can't really change this. You can determine at runtime what they are, but you can't really change. I mean, you can assign a different MD array to it, which technically changes its size, but that's about it. Chris? Hey, yeah, th thanks for the talk. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, you, you were mentioning before that you, you couldn't find any info why the uh, array view was shut down in plenary. Yeah. Um, so actually, on the, uh, I just checked the, 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 um, the public minutes uh, for the plenary in Linuxa, and it seems that Carter Edwards uh, raised, raised a comment that they already had discussed um, issues in Luke, and Luke had acknowledged uh, that those were problems, but they were not incorporated in, into the paper. Okay. And then that, that probably led to it being shut down. Cool. Right. Thank you. The one place I didn't check yeah. for, for, for that. I went through a lot. You saw, I went through a lot of papers and a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah. I hope people got a feel for, you know, what it takes to ship these kinds of things. Uh oh, Bjarne's coming with a question. Quite a cheeky question. <laughs> Can I have an empty span with one dimension and a signed index? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> span. <laughs> Having never been involved in this at all. It, clearly, it's important, but why do you have a signed uh, index? It can be, um, you can do bounds checking, you can do performance, because you can optimize it, right? Unsigned numbers are required to wrap in C and C++, right? Signed numbers are not. So, you know, it's undefined behavior if you try to wrap them, except for atomic. It's, we'll go there. So you know you can do um, things like sanitizers. You can check with you know no false positives. You know if you're going out, and you can optimize basically. You can assume they can't wrap. The compiler, the compiler can assume they can't wrap. And different size things can give you different performance depending on the architecture. Good question. I've got two minutes left. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.